right then. I've got across the field. Put my hood up, I missed my hat. Already, it's a bit blowy up here, just slightly. There's um, Banwell Wood over there, look. Um, you can't see it, but Banwell Hill Fort is beyond those trees there. You can't see it at the moment. So far, so good, and look. Fence is broken. Definitely no chance of a cow. This is where uh, the possibility of cows are quite often here. But he'd have to repair that before he brings the cows back in. So, we've managed to do it. And it's probably I won't do it again this year. I don't tend to repeat the same walk. Sometimes I have to pass a certain area, junction points. But I won't be doing that particular walk. I might do the one up at the top and do the quarry one, you know what I mean? And there is a possibility I might think about coming back this way, but I know for sure they will use this field for cows. It's a big, big field. It stretches all the way down there and far beyond there. It's a big field for cows. And I can't imagine them not having them out. The grass doesn't look very long at the moment. Hasn't grown that much here. But they could have had sheep up, up here. Anyway, I've managed to do it. And the sun's coming out. I've tied my hair up because uh, it do get a bit hot with the hair flapping about. And do you know what? I nearly didn't bring the hat. Because I thought, oh, you end up putting it in my bag. I said I wasn't going to talk about it, but <laughs> I don't know. I think you get attached to your hat, you know. Um, as opposed to a sock. I think your hat's... Yeah, but it was time for a change. That hat will have a journey, or it might end up in a bin. Somebody might rescue it and like it and wash it out. Or it might come my, my way again. But it was time for a change. <sighs> my little Russian hat. Hmm. Yeah. So I mustn't keep talking about it, but I'm sure I'll mention it. I'm sure I will. The only other hat I've got for the winter at the moment is a really woolly one with a pom-pom on it. Like, I've hardly used it because we haven't had a cold enough winter. So, I do need a, another little, a little hat. I mean, in the summer, I've got my summer hat which is like a thing, a very lightweight thing that also has um, a rim that protects you from the sun in your eyes and things like that. That will be coming out now. Basically, that will be coming out soon. But I wouldn't mind getting a small crocheted hat, a little skull cap type thing. Um... No, I don't. I, I am. I am talking about it, but I shouldn't. I mustn't waste a film talking about a hat. Right. So anyway, we're going to be going downhill in a minute. I'm going to need both hands. It's bad enough coming up the steps, but the problem going down it is um, slipping. Then I'll be climbing up the other side. I'll be going down, then up. Then there's a long track up to Robera Warren. When I get to the top, I'm going to have a banana. I'm tucking into my picnic. I've already ate my bounty. Wish I'd brought the Kit Kat now. Um, right, over and out, folks. Just take a picture of the scene. Right, off we go. Going across the troll bridge. Sun's come out. Feels like spring, everyone. It's only two days official seasonal spring is here even though meteorological spring has been declared seasonal spring is in two days time on the 21st of March two or three days time and here we have the little brook very very busy this time of year so I've just come down from up there which has been videoed and photographed and Christ knows over the since I first came here in about 2009, 
on the way to Shippen in search of our cousin in Canada's ancestors, the Hells of Shippen and Rowbarrow. I first came here, I remember finding this bridge, going to St. Leonard's Church, and it was, a, I discovered a route, you see then, up into the woods, up into Rowbarrow Warren, which I'll be seeing a lot of in the summer. What I do now, before the season of the cow kicks in, I do all the places I can't do when they're out, for fear of being attacked and trampled. It's lovely isn't it, the sound of water. I've got to climb up that steep bit and then it levels off, it's not too bad. That's a lovely little scene there isn't it. I'm going to turn off then folks, so I've got to go up there, cross the road, but there's nice views at the top where I can have a banana, or I might keep the banana till I get up the top by Robert Warren. Lovely isn't it? Yeah, lovely. All right, over and out. Oh, the sun's over, you can't see. The only thing is with this, is that you've got no viewfinder. Right, folks, I'm just doing a bit of a swap. I, the uh, Kodak isn't exhausted, but I thought I'd, what I'd do now is use the Sony video camera, which works on video. I can't, it's got no viewfinder. Just checking it's on. But I thought I'd do a bit taking turns using the two cameras. That pretty little flower, look, look at that. It's sweet, all his own. Isn't he brave? With the pollen. That's why the pollen counts high, you've got the spring flowers. So I was quite surprised to see that as they said the pollen counts high. I tended to associate it with June, July and August, but no, it's high in, in um, the spring. Ship them down there, we're just skirting above. The hill fort over there, which we will be doing at some point this year, don't worry about that. It's quite an easy route to get for me to get to that on the 125 bus. Of course, there was another walk I wanted to do, but because it was right by a river, it's the Rington to Congressbury that I wanted to try and do before cows. There probably aren't any cows, but because it's close to the river, I think it'll be one big bog. So I've avoided it again. <sighs> Anyway, we've had a little rest here and there. Lots of daffodils about. And uh, we'll be going down a little lane in a minute. Skirting Shipham. Skirting Shipham Village. Quite often when I'm going in the summer, I go down through the village past the pub and then down to Winscombe that way <sighs> looks lovely with the daffodils doesn't it and the primulas or primroses they're nice aren't they look at that I might take a picture of them oh yeah I don't know if this belongs, that's private or not, I don't know. But we go this way. <sighs> yeah, I've been a bit breathless after climbing up that massive hill. 
the second first part I did coming up the West Mendip Way wasn't too bad. It was only when I had to climb out of the valley near the troll bridge that I realised how breathless I was, but up to then I'd been alright. <sighs> um, and I'll be alright now, This is, but I have got to go uphill again. <sighs> Any of the walks over here are up and down really. If you don't think you're going alright and then suddenly you've got to do a hill. Expecting this to be boggy. <sighs> Just a little track. Now I did this a couple of months back in the coming the other way. After a row barrel walk, I came up I came up through here. And it wasn't like this. But we've had a lot of rain since. A lot of rain and the ground is saturated. When you start chopping the trees down, the trees actually take some of the water. That's what they're going to find up on that hill. When they start cutting the trees down, what's going to hold the water? What's going to absorb the carbon dioxide? It's terrible. If they do want to build on there, Wilbury, no doubt about it. It's a, using archaeology as an excuse to cut everything down. That's what all it is. They want to build luxury homes up there and that's what they'll do. Nobody can stop them. They've already taken over the quarry there. <sighs> to build homes on the quarry. should be listed. It should be history. A lot of people like going there for their afternoon tea, listening to some music when they have a concert there. Yeah, the council are all made up of rich people, not of ordinary people like the rest of us. And they dominate everything. And they don't care if they cut trees down. Look at that H2 project, where they destroyed loads of farmland, cut ancient oaks down. Ancient oaks. And now it's been abandoned that H2 project. They destroyed farmers' lives. Took their farms away. They don't even know if they can buy them back. <sighs> That's what I mean. Power and control everywhere you go. In the countryside. We have, fortunately, we have got some eco-friendly farmers. Thank goodness for that. Yeah, I'm just doing a slow plod today. I probably won't achieve some of what I would have done normally. Um, I ain't going to worry about it. I won't, I'm not going to check the time at all until I get up the top before I go into Robo Warren. This just really to pace myself as being obsessed with whether I miss a bus. <sighs> at least we got the 126 back. <sighs> but like I say, the weather has kept me away. Right, here we go. Bamwell Wood from the, there. Sanford Quarry and Wood area there. The Hill Fort there. Robarrow and Dolbury Warren Hill Fort. Has doesn't look much like a hill fort, does it, from here? But when you're up there, it's quite quite significant. Uh, I think that's a hill point anyway. Is it? Or am I in the wrong place? Yeah, no it is. Yes. Yeah, be 
you wouldn't think so. There's other hill forts like Wilbury, look, our hill fort at Weston looks much more like a hill fort. It sticks out, it's big and bold. It's over there. I'll zoom into it in a minute. You wouldn't know there was a hill fort there, would you? It looks quite flat. You look back at Weston's over there. I can't, I've got no viewfinder, so, but over there there's Weston Hill Fort, and that is so much sticking out. Then just in front of it, you've got Banwell, a little tiny pancake one, little plateau hill fort. That's Banwell. That looks more like a hill fort, that big long bit, and it probably was. That's where the quarry is, Sanford. But over there, you wouldn't know that was a hill fort until you're on it. When you're on Dolbury Warren Hill Fort, you really know you're on a hill fort. You know what I mean? It's got all the features. Like from just standing here, you wouldn't think so. But you look over there, you can see Westerns. All these holes in the ground, they got names. I don't know if it's puddling or something where they used to do the ground mining. That's what all these holes are. They've got names. It's got a problem. I keep calling it puddling. It might not be puddling, but it's something like it. That's what all these holes are. This was uh, the sort of area where my cousin, who passed away, unfortunately, Barbara, in Canada, her ancestors used to do surface mining here. They lived down in the village and at Roborough and at Weston. And then some of them moved to Wells for a while when the work ran out and did some mining and not deep into Wells, Monmouth, sort of Monmouthshire, that sort of way. Then one of her great grandfathers emigrated to Canada. There was lots of opportunities for people to emigrate back then. They'd even pay for people to go. Same with Australia. You got given a ticket and you could take your family. And that's what a lot of people did. They emigrated for a better life. And to be quite honest, it did turn out well for them. Most people got given a bit of land. They had to go in a camp to start with, I think, till it all got organised. But I think they did better, those that emigrated, where their descendants have. Well, that's not a nice big thing. But of course, um, it is a bit cloudy, but it's, it's all right. I believe the weatherman when he said it won't rain. But I didn't totally believe him. I brought the umbrella just in case. It doesn't weigh much. It isn't a very good one, but it keep it off a bit. Right, let me just put that on there while I cross over the stoil. Which I have crossed many times. Even dropped a brand new Sony down on the, on the slabs there once. That one did get damaged, by the way. So, it worked, but it was damaged. Oh, fresh air in my lungs. I feel better already. I feel better already. I had a little bit of a discomfort patch back there where I couldn't breathe very well and my, my lungs were aching. And uh, I think some of it was colic. So it's gone now. It was, it's quite uncomfortable when that happens. You just have to really sit it out. That's why I normally take a flask of hot water with me because that, um, that disperses any trapped wind or stomach ache. It's really good, but I didn't today. I don't tend to take it out in the summer, hot water. But I think I should, you know. Still water, isn't it? Right, in a minute we've got to get over another stile. Then we're going up a little lane and we're heading all the way up to Roborough Warren. So we've left this area. You can still smell that bonfire that bloke was having. And then we come into the back of Shipham here. Now sometimes I don't come this way. I go straight down along the road. In the summer, when the cows are out up there, I have an alternative route I use. And they don't come this way. I've got some other things I want to do. It's like go to, 
to uh, Clevedon and Poets Corner and things like that, which I haven't done yet. Oh, that's nice. Somebody's taken that bit down. Thank God for that. Aren't very safe anyway. <sighs> Over and out. <laughs>